While Nigeria and many African nations you know, have laws that are discriminatory to the LGBT community, there are also laws that protect fundamental basic human rights. This, of course, might come as a shock to you, but yeah, when the Nigerian reality hits you so hard, you tend to be aloof of what totally applies in the books. This, of course, you know, will set the tone of our discussion here on set. Hello, welcome to Untold Facts, where we tell it just the way it is, however uncomfortable it may sound to you or even to me right here. I'm Moses or Morgana. So, I have a very interesting uh, personalities here in the studio. Um, yeah, once again, we have um, Olumide Makunjola. Olumide Makunjola is a sexual um, health and rights promoter. Um, he also, through his activism, he has engaged in you know, policymakers and stakeholders at the local, national, regional, and even international platforms. Thank you so much, Olumide, for joining us again. Thank you for having me again. And um, we have, um, uh, there are so many words, you know, to describe her, but I'm just going to go easy. Omolara Orie. Amalara Oriye is a lawyer by practice. She's a blogger, a writer, a human rights activist, um, an advocate, a feminist. Amalara Oriye, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, um, laws, infringement, seeking redress, discrimination, you know, these are the common terms, you know, gay men and women, you know, are used to, you know, in Nigeria and all, all over. Now, as an advocate of the law, what comes to mind really when you see an average Nigerian being abused without perhaps the opportunity to seek for redress. What comes to, what is your usual reaction? Okay, thank you. My usual reaction would be to think of other ways, you know, through which people can get redress. The idea is that there's no protection whatsoever mm. for LGBTI people in Nigeria at the mm. moment. But mm. you don't have to just seek redress in Nigerian courts. You can go to the Coas court. You can go to, mm. you know, you can go as far as you like. You know, fine. I hear you, uh, Lara. But this really, you know, will sound palatable to a learned or an elite, really. But to an average Nigerian on the street, a taxi driver, a market woman, how do you expect him or her to go to an ECOWAS court or even know that an ECOWAS court even e exists? What platforms can these ordinary Nigerians even go through really to, you know, to really seek for justice? Well, we have NGOs. You okay. can, you know, contact an NGO. I think that is being done with domestic violence. A lot of people, you know, now know that they can contact NGOs. They can talk to, you know, government bodies like the um, OPD. You can let them understand what you're going through and even if they cannot help at the moment they can direct you to someone who can so i feel like for people on the streets for market people and probably people who are not educated and need to you know seek redress or need help in whatever way you know ngos are out there and i think that would help all right now sp speaking about seeking redress Lumide, how is it even possible for someone to seek redress when the law even makes your existence you know abominable how how how, how do you go from there I think that, you know, if we're not going to look at this from the angle of labeling, hmm. if we don't call anybody gay, lesbian, bi, trans person, I think the law actually protects. And not even I think I actually need the law protect. Because for what the law says is human. And if you're going to seek redress, you have to seek redress from that perspective. Because you, first of all, you're, you're a human being. Regardless of anything that comes, you know, with your identity, your orientation, the court is going to see you as a human being, not as a gay man, not as a bisexual woman or bisexual man. And these are things that, you know, generally people need to understand that you must be able to exhaust the local laws that you have. And no matter how, you know, vague or complicated it might look, Nigeria has the highest power to protect of citizens, regardless of sexual orientation. This might not be specifically stated in the constitution, but it does protect every citizen. And the moment you are born in this country, you live in this country, you pay tax in this country, you work in this country, the government, state, federal, the judicial system has the power to actually protect you, you know, regardless of what anybody thinks based on their own religious view. All right, now, we've seen cases, you know, where a gay man or a gay woman, you know, can be, you know, gang beaten up or battered, you know, for suspected of being gay. Now, the victim perhaps goes to the police station, you know, where oftentimes he or she is even being ridiculed, you know, because of the social, you know, perception. Now, as a lawyer, if you were to be involved in that case, 
where do you take that person from? How do you help that person to feel justified as a lawyer? All right, I think I have to explain some things. Now, the Constitution provides, you know, for the uh, presence of human rights for every Nigerian. And Section 42 specifically, you know, says no discrimination. Now, when it comes to assault, now, if you've been assaulted and it's because you're gay or because you're whatever, yeah. the, the labels are... And things. they often times seem to forget that you're equally assaulting a human being yes. who has rights. Now, I think that to seek redress, you will mm. not be seeking redress as a gay man who was beaten up. You understand me? Section 55 of the Criminal Code Act basically says the assaulting of a male Nigerian, a male person, is a felony and you're liable to three years in prison. So I think that the idea would be to stop the labeling. If a person has been assaulted, report to the police and get and seek redress as a person who has been assaulted. Instead of going to the police as a gay man who has been assaulted, I think most of the work we're doing with, um, with human rights and you know, campaigns against discrimination is to stop the labeling. <coughs> if a human being has been assaulted, a human being seeks redress. If a goat has been assaulted, no redress. Well, I don't know how it works in the animal kingdom, but I feel like <laughs> if a person has been, you know, has been, if your rights have been infringed upon, hmm. you seek redress as a human being. The law protects all humans in Nigeria. Hmm. So I think that's how you, 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 would, um, you would address such a situation. You would not try to say, oh, um, I got beaten because I was gay, because you could have been beaten for whatever reason. <coughs> so just seek redress as a person, because the work we're doing every day is to stop discrimination and the labeling. Um, but just also say to you, Mona, is the fact that, you know, as much as I, I strongly, I, I do agree with you, but however, sometimes you have to look at situation that which led to the discrimination. Yes, and the police might want to carry out their investigations. Yes. And why, you know, Liberty has their own disadvantage sometimes. If somebody was beaten because they are gay, you cannot remove that fact. Just a few months ago, I'm not sure how many of us saw this in the news of an alleged killing of a man in Ondo State you know, for supposedly being caught in the heart with, his, with another partner in his, in, his, in his other apartment. Now, if I decide to take up that case as an organization, I'm not just going to take up the case of a murderer. Murderer, number one. But why was he murdered? It was murdered because there was... Perceived of being gay. Yes. And, you know, sometimes, you know, even as much as you don't want to deal with the labeling, people... Because in the process of that, you lose essence for documentation. Yeah. And then you cannot really trace how many numbers of people get discriminated, get beaten, get battered because of who they are. You put everything on that one box and everybody's battered. But why are, they, why are people battered? So sometimes, you know, in the process of trying to get accurate information, you might end up with the labeling. Yeah. But that does not mean to say that, you know, as a lawyer in your own practice, mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer, but, you know. Yeah, I definitely understand that. But you have to understand that we are in a society where... Gay people do not enjoy so, do not enjoy some liberties. Hmm. For example, there's the um, same sex, whatever law. My prohibition. Yes, that Act. was passed, and you know that law is the singular most discriminatory thing I've ever set my eyes on. And the idea that the, the the idea that the police would need to uphold that law would come into play when a person has been caught or. You know, I don't, I don't like to say the word caught. When a person has been probably seen with another man or Even another woman. perceived. You know, Just mere yes, suspicion. Yes, mere suspicion these days. Mm. But the idea for me is that the groundwork needs to be done to erase discrimination. Now, when we erase discrimination, the reason why people are, are battered or assaulted would, you know, naturally move on from, you know, he's gay or she's gay yeah. and move on to you have human beings. A human being yes. who has rights. Yes. So I feel like at the end of the day, mm. I, in, in law, I don't. Okay, I, I think that when you're when when a person is taken to court and all that, you, the reason why such several acts are done are not actually material to a level. What you need is the intent. Have you intended to hurt this person? Then the actors reyes. Have you carried out your intention toward this person? So the reason why a person has been assaulted sometimes might not be material. That is why I always like to attack the the enemy, which is discrimination. Because a situation where discrimination does not exist, then a gay man is not being beaten, a gay woman is not being beaten, a human being, a citizen of Nigeria, has been abused. Has been abused. So the law does not see male or female, the yes. law sees a human yes. being, a person. Yes. All right, now, do you think that, you know, 
LGBT people, you know, we need new sets of laws or rules, you know, for gay men and women different from human rights, not because gay people are not human beings, but because perhaps maybe things just need to be spelt out in black and white. What, are you, what is your reaction to that? All right, so I would like to explore, um, you know, some laws from like, you know, back in the day. I was mm. reading the document a while ago and I found that even in the UN, as far back as 1945, there had been laws against discrimination, which, you know, which it laws that, well, I think it's, it's a charter, the Human Rights Charter, mm. you know, basically covers everybody. No discrimination on whatsoever basis. I'd like to think that gay, bi, lesbianism, all that falls under whatsoever. Do not discriminate against a human being for whatever reason. And, you know, these laws have been there. These, um, these documents have been there. I don't think that we need a new set of laws to govern LGBT, um, LGBT situations. I think that we need to evolve. We need to spell things out in the existing law. For example, the Nigerian constitution conveniently leaves out sexual orientation in section 42 where it says no discrimination on basis of gender on basis of political views on basis of you know several other things so i feel like our laws need to be expanded to you know spell out a few things that you know have evolved over time i don't know if you understand because yeah, but sure. my idea would not be to create a separate you know set of laws for lgbt people mm -hmm. human rights because you the, make the problem even more obvious yes yeah. And that takes me back to discrimination. H when the human rights cover human beings. I have met a lot of gay people and they're human beings. Yes. If, you know, they, they are human. Pretty normal. Everyone, <laughs> I, I do not think that we should, you know, sep we should sep have separate laws for LGBT people. I think the human rights is like, you know, is a huge covering. If we need to do any work, maybe we need to do some work on expanding the law spell out some things because of the, 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 the situation we live in these days, you know, I think, I think well, that's I mean, what you, I think. You want to say something, you know, especially from perhaps the social implication of this? Yes, I think that, you know, I, I mean, I'm not an advocate of new law because you don't even need new laws. Mm -hmm. I mean, that itself, send, you know, totally gives the wrong information that, you know, LGBT are a different set of people. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're in the bank, they're in the medical field, they're in the law profession. They're Bus, bus conductor, driver, <laughs> everyday people you see. So not different from people. They're not different from people you see every day. So no new law is required. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to create a space that people can conveniently have conversations, that can educate people on laws and what law says on this kind of different issues. You know, just the way we talk about women's issues in this country. Some people still mm -hmm. think. I mean, a few months ago, I was reading some line where a senator said, you know, gender equality bills on Africa was unnatural. All of those things boils down to information and education and being open-minded. You know, what are the information that are out there? So you don't need, you know, like you said, what you need is to just to expand and educate people that there is no restriction in what you have. Mm. Every human being has a right, regardless of what you think as a person. And as long as what they do don't infringe on your person, and I don't think that there is any way people's sexuality infringes on my right or your right or anybody's right. You know, it's just so, understanding. So as it is at the moment, there aren't any specific laws that protect sexual minorities. In Nigeria? Mm. In Nigeria. Yeah. Well, I haven't but, found any. But we do have many well. laws that actually discriminate. LG. And, you know, and that's another sense that you get. Why would a government create many layers of laws? You have the <coughs> same-sex marriage prohibition act. Mm. You have the criminal penal code. You have the Sharia law, which is in, implemented in about twelve northern states in Nigeria. Like different layers of laws for one for one community. Like, and is that bad? I, actually, I think mm. my issue with the with the the situation with LGBT in Nigeria is the fact that. The, the government has become some sort of devil. You know, we Christians believe that the devil gives you, gives you something with one hand and takes it back with the other. So you give people freedom, you give them uh, human rights, you give them a covering with the constitution, but then you take it back with several legislations. I think that that is what bothers me about Nigeria. I feel like these laws need to be repealed. They need to be removed. They and use less laws. They need to be taken out so that... <laughs> So that you know, humans can enjoy a peaceable environment. I think the the idea that the, the idea that um, being gay or 
you know, being bisexual or whatever, infringe upon other people's rights is actually annoying. It's the highest level of hypocrisy. You steal, you lie, you do whatever you want to do, and you actually put people in trouble with all these things. But a man or a woman who just wants to have a natural relationship with, somebody, with another person is infringing upon your right. How? I do not understand that. And I think the Nigerian government has a lot of work to do you know, in this area. Okay, at this point, I'll probably take you to calm down. <laughs> There's a lot of passion and hate <laughs> in there. But it pretty much seems like, you know, you've said it all. But, you know, just for the sake of formalities, final words, really, before we call it a wrap. Yeah. Final what did words. you say to our Nigerian <laughs> draconian <laughs> legislators? Final words. Final, final, final words. I think Olimide would go first. <laughs> what are your final words? I think one of the things that I, I, I know as citizens of this country we need to understand is every human being as a right they're not new right for lgbt and we do not even need new rights of lgbt what we need is a system that recognize and protect every human being regardless of who they are whether straight whether gay whether bi short black white purple whatever they are they are citizens of this country and that's the kind of understanding that's the kind of generation we need to develop mm. we need to develop a kind of generation that understand that people are beyond just what you label them as, but they are human. I might not like you, but you are human. And people must be treated in that full human capacity. We need to decentralize this notion and sense that, you know, some people are better than some other people. And LGBT people are the less better people. And, you know, the straight people, who are the majority, are the, you know, better people. You can't take every one set of rights from one people to please the other. You cannot displease you know, LGBT people because you don't like them to please straight people. You have to please everybody and everybody has to be, we must create a space for everybody to coexist. And I think that is the most important thing. If we continue to have all of these laws, we will not create space where people can coexist. And I think that is the most important. Okay. Right. My last words um, would definitely be to talk to the lawmakers that we have in Nigeria. I think they should take a break from buying new cars and um, amassing so much wealth and take a look at the human beings on the streets in Nigeria. Because these laws have greater implications on people who do not understand their rights, who do not know what is right and what is wrong. Now, I would like to say that our lawmakers feel very comfortable to throw out laws that would you know, f maybe further the cause of probably women, because yes, I'm still very pained from the incident with the, you know, with the equality bill thing. And the idea is you throw out such, such trite, uh, such idea to entertain a law that discriminates somebody's, discriminates against somebody's personal life. What has happened to the right to privacy? I think we need to make good laws in Nigeria. That would be my first you know, my, my, my first uh, thing to say, make better laws and, you know, focus on bettering the life of every, lives of everyday Nigerians. All right. Thank you so much, Omolara. Thank you so much, Olumide, for being part of this conversation. Um, well, they've said it all. Omolara says, you know, um, suggest that we should, you know, expand the good ones and repeal the bad laws. And um, Olumide basically summarizes that uh, eventually, all in all, we're humans and we should be treated as such. It's untold fact, conversations like never heard before. Don't forget... On Instagram, you can join the conversation using at Tears Nigeria or via Twitter at hash, using the hashtag Untold Facts. And of course, on Facebook, it's the initiative for equal rights.